In this video, I want to cover a topic of correlation. Correlation is essentially the relationship amongst two variables. So let's talk a little bit about correlation. Sometimes correlation is abbreviated simply by the letter R. Later, we'll actually talk about R squared, which is the coefficient of determination uh, which are both related. Essentially, the R square is just that, a square of R. The coefficient of correlation R is the measure of the strength of the relationship between two variables. It is measured by the direction and strength of a linear relation between the two variables. So essentially, this value can range from negative 1 to positive 1. So the direction would be either if it's negative or positive, and then the strength is how close to one it is in an absolute fashion. For example, we could have positive 0.9, and that would be a very strong relationship in the positive direction. We could also have negative 0.9, which would be a strong negative correlation. So uh, we can have either. So strength, again, is the measurement in terms of the magnitude, anywhere from 0 to 1 in an absolute fashion. And the direction, of course, is the negative or plus. So if we do have a perfect value of 1, either in the negative or positive direction, that's a perfect and strong correlation. We can't get any stronger. Um, values close to 0 represent a weak correlation. So negative values indicate the inverse relationship, and a positive value indicates a direct relationship. So essentially what we mean by that is if we have a positive relationship or a direct relationship, as we increase some sort of value, let's call it x, in this case the other value y will also increase. If we're talking about a negative or an inverse relationship, as x increases, y decreases. So let's take a quick look at this graph. Essentially what this is recommending is a rule of thumb in terms of determining whether you have a strong, moderate, or weak correlation. So anything around the 0.5 in an absolute fashion is a moderate. So it's really a rule of thumb where you want to break off what becomes a strong and a weak. I would typically say anything above 0.8 would be strong. Anything below perhaps 0.3 um, would be a weak, but that's uh, just a rule of thumb. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the tasks of this learning activity. We have a scenario. Basically, we have a data set that summarize uh, many participants who were questioned about what their major was, what their current income status was, GPA when they were in college, and SAT scores. So we want to essentially develop some uh, correlation values to explore um, the relationship amongst these variables. So let's go ahead and start by opening up the file. When we open up the starting file, we'll see the data set that I'm referring to. Out of all the participants, it looks like we had a total of, let's see, let's do a quick sum here. Looks like we had a total of 2,243 survey participants. We asked those participants um, their major and as an undergraduate career and their current income now that they're employed and essentially their GPA information when they're undergraduate, math, verbal, and of course we summarize the sample size. I should note that this, this data was uh, collected from previous research, which is actually documented in the PowerPoint I just showed. Um, the title of the article is Determining Future Success of College Students by Paul Orlin in 2009. So if you wanna go back to that PowerPoint and read the full article, it is freely available. Uh, online. Okay, so there's a couple things that we can do with uh, this this topic. Um, when we look at our attributes, really what we want to determine is if GPA and perhaps the SAT, math, SAT, verbal is correlated with their current income. Okay, so what we can actually do is utilize a formula and I'm just going to simply summarize it here as correlation 
<clears throat> I'm going to use the same formatting as I did here for the headers. And what I'm going to do is use the formula core. So we can type C-O-R and we see that there's only one formula. It is the core L or correlation abbreviated. We can hit tab to fill out the rest of the formula. It's asking for two arrays. The first array I'm going to select is my average income. And I'm going to apply dollar signs in the column and row fashion because I want to lock this. And I'm going to hit a comma and I'm going to reference this range again. So essentially what I'm going to do here is ask Excel to calculate the correlation between average income and average income. So we are going to get a perfect correlation. But I've left the second range in a relative fashion so I can fill this formula to the right. So let's go ahead and end our parentheses and hit enter. And we do in fact have the one perfect correlation that we expected. I'm going to show two more decimal places and fill this formula to the right. So actually it's pretty interesting research if you uh, want to take a look at that farther. I won't, won't get into it greatly. But what we're actually seeing here is very low correlations to income. So as an undergraduate student, your GPA is weakly correlated to your current income. Actually, math scores uh, seems to be the highest correlation of any of these academic attributes. I'm sort of ignoring sample size for now, even though I have the value here of 0.45. So um, what it suggests is we have basically a, a weak to moderate correlation, a positive correlation of math to our average income, which is pretty much the highest correlation, but still pretty weak in my opinion. There's another thing we can do in terms of our correlations that you might want to explore. Here I'm addressing sort of the dependent attribute income by our independent attributes, GPA, math, and verbal, and for that matter, sample size, but sample size can be ignored. What we actually might want to do here is to investigate the correlation in between attributes. So for example, how well correlated is GPA to math? Well, we could do a similar type of uh, analysis here and do correlation and use GPA dollar signs comma GPA range and fill this formula to right and let's fill this uh, format this was two decimal places what this is actually showing us now is the correlation amongst those independent attributes so we get a perfect correlation as we'd expect for average GPA to average GPA and it's telling us that the average math score of these survey participants is positively correlated with GPA. And for that matter, verbal is also positively correlated. Pretty strong correlation here, stronger verbal tie to the GPA. And uh, essentially we can fill out the remainder of this correlation matrix by essentially doing the same thing for the correlation of math And I'm going to do this quickly here. Math, and then we can move on to verbal in the next row, all the way till we get a perfect correlation here with sample size, which is not necessarily an interesting variable. And now I'm going to simply format this. And what we have generated here is a correlation matrix. So we have every possible correlation that we'd ever want to investigate in this correlation matrix. So for example, here we have a value of 0.82 that represents the correlation between GPA and verbal. If we move down one, 0.85, that actually looks like our highest correlation besides the ones which are perfectly correlated. This 85 is the correlation between math and verbal SAT scores. 
Okay, a quick way to generate a matrix like this is actually to use the data analysis tool pack. So what we can do is go to data, go to the data analysis tool pack, select correlation, hit OK, and uh, select our input range, which is going to be, I'm going to highlight everything from income to sample size. We have our data group by columns. We do have labels in the first row. And I'm going to put this output range, um, let's go ahead and just put it right here. It's going to generate that correlation matrix uh, slightly different in a slightly different fashion. I have a upper triangle here essentially of the matrix and this is a lower left triangular um, position of the matrix but actually we have the same exact values but this is a very nice tool in terms of generating that correlation matrix uh, very quickly so I'm just going to format this so we can read this a little bit better so we have the same values these aren't formulas of course this is static values so if we start to change these numbers this will not change but sometimes um, we don't necessarily need to go through the rigor of developing formulas for this uh, type of analysis. So this is useful too. Uh, I actually prefer to use the formulas because if I change any of the values or start to add more survey participants for one of these categories or, or whatever it is, uh, I can quickly generate all those correlation values. But again, this is, this is really just based on your application. And if we wanted to make this a little bit more useful in what I've done here, we could tie this to uh, the labels so it makes a little bit more sense. So if I was to fill out the labels here, I basically want to start with average income, the next one, GPA, math, and so forth. I would actually do something tricky here. We could copy paste special transpose to get that text. But if we wanted to write a formula, what I would do is actually write an index. What I want to index are these labels the row is always going to be locked in as a one and the column number I essentially want to increment from one to five since I have five labels I would say okay I'm gonna fill this formula down so as I fill down I need something that represents a one filled down represents a two filled down represents a three so we can actually use a formula called row and I'm gonna reference a one so it's essentially asking, well, what row is A1 in? Well, that's a one, that's in row one. If I fill this down and leave it as a relative relative reference, it's gonna be A2. Well, what row is A2 in? It's going to be a two. So actually, we can utilize that sort of clever trick and fill this formula down. So we have now a complete correlation matrix that we've developed on our own. And granted, we could actually change this, but in terms of the layout, if we really wanted to, but I think this is uh, convenient enough. If we do it through the data analysis tool pack, we have something like this, which is also useful. Um, but again, these are not static, or these, I should say, are static values. And uh, if you add data later, that could be an issue. So with that said, we do have an interesting data set. If we look at the dependent attribute in this data set, I would look at the correlations of all the independent attributes, in particular GPA, math, and verbal. And actually I recognize that GPA and uh, SAT scores really don't matter in terms of one's income, which might surprise some of you. Um, so anyway, an interesting uh, bit of research. Uh, definitely you can do more with the research, so I urge you to read it if you're interested in knowing more about Paul's research. The final thing I want to do is just to create two quick graphs, an example of a very weak correlation. I'm going to graph average income uh, with respect to GPA, and then I'll take a strong correlation and I'll graph math and verbal. So let's start out with the GPA income. I'm just going to make quick work of this and develop a scatter plot where my 
series name, I'll just call it uh, for now uh, GPA. X will be GPA values. Y will be income. Hit OK. I'm actually going to hit OK again and add a trend line. Again, correlation is a linear trend line. And just go ahead and add that there. Give a default, use a default layout. Uh, this is average income, and this is going to be average GPA. So there is the correlation. Uh, it does look like when I used that default, it took away my trend line. So let's add that back quickly. I'm going to display equation in R squared. Simply put this along the side here. So this is an example where there's the line is really flat, which means you have a very low correlation. Uh, doesn't look like as we increase our x, anything is really happening, which is why the correlation value is essentially zero, negative 0 0.09. Now to do a quick graph of, um, let's say, uh, math and verbal, I'm just going to copy this chart since I have some of the formatting already done for me. And when I click on the chart, I'm going to move the GPA to verbal and all of the labels, and then I'm going to move income over to math. So we have, let's see, we need to fix the labels. So if you are unsure which one is X and Y, let's right click, select data, edit. X values are coming from E, which is verbal. So let's go ahead and fix that. X is coming from E, which means our Y is going to come from D. So um, here is our example. Let's, we actually have changed that label, uh, so we're okay, but uh, we could do some work. This is actually, maybe it's better to type uh, correlation of AVG income and AVG, oops, and AVG GPA. And this one is going to be correlation of, of average math and average verbal. Got an extra space here. Let's hit enter. So we can see uh, here it's very clear that as we increase verbal, math is also increasing. So that's uh, basically the strong rela relationship we're seeing there. Okay, so let's just do a quick, very quick review. Uh, let me actually move this a little so we see the legend and uh, make this a little bit more appealing. Okay, so let's just take a quick review. We have a data set where I'm treating this as a dependent and the rest are independent even though sample size doesn't matter much. We went through the manual process of creating a correlation matrix. Then I actually showed you a way we can create a correlation matrix, a static one albeit, through the data analysis tool, park, tool pack, I should say. Once we completed that, I graphed these two relationships. Here is an example of basically no correlation. Here is definitely a trend going upward, and it's a positive. It's very, the dots, if you will, are tight to the line, so we have a very strong correlation.